Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. It's my birthday unboxing episode. I have been looking for these guitars right here. And this guy made my birthday by selling these things. So I actually talked about these in one of my guitar hunting episodes and nobody ever made any comments about it. So yeah, it's very possible that nobody else in the world cares about these things. But this is just like a, a little piece of childhood within here. And they're not particularly expensive guitars by any means, but they're very difficult to find because they were a limited edition. And people that do own them, they don't tend to know their value. Like they don't even think that somebody would actually want to even purchase them. But I do. I know their value. I know that they're beautiful little quirky creatures. I also know that the, the review and demo, probably not going to get that many views, but who knows, maybe people will surprise me. But I want to do this video just as a service to all the people like me who's always wanted to see these things in person. Because how great would that be if you're looking for these weird, obscure guitars that nobody knows about? And then you find my video with some B-roll shots of um, an okay playing demo. Because everybody on YouTube has done the Hello Kitty Stratocasters to death. I still would like to do it one more time, but now we need to dive into Cartoon Network. Ah, oh, man. So let's start with this one here. This is the initial one that I've been hunting for. <laughs> Opening this up. I haven't even seen it yet, but I'm pretty happy. The Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> Okay, so once we take the newspaper off of here, this is a Daisy Rock Signature Powerpuff Girls guitar. Let me tell you, in person, this thing is a lot tinier than I thought it was going to be. But I'm not going to spoil too much in this unboxing episode, but essentially there were like only 100 of these made as a giveaway item, and then they also sold them, I think, on the Cartoon Network's website for a short amount of time. But there's only like 200 of these cheap little things ever made. But you can find tons of Daisy Rock little heart guitars, but you can't find them with the Powerpuff Girls on them. What else could be in our second Cartoon Network gig bag here? I'm really appreciative that he took the time to find the gig bags, because he said he had a dig for this one. This is the one that I expect to actually get some views on YouTube for. Oh man, this is cool. <laughs> Mojo Jojo. Is it like a Stratocaster type thing? I don't know. I guess it's more like a Schecter guitar. Speaking of Schecter, these are actually made by Schecter. One of them, well, at least in the photos, said, yeah, made by Schecter. But the main parent brand is Daisy Rock on both of these. Now the Mojo Jojos, they actually have a few different iterations. I'm not sure which one this is, but this guy, he's had them ever since the 90s because his wife actually worked for Cartoon Network. She was like the eighth employee or something. So he always thought that he would just like upgrade these things. And I don't know, I guess depending on how the review does for each of these, you know, maybe I will like overhaul these things with something really cool. But I don't care. I like them. I wouldn't call myself like the biggest Powerpuff Girls fan, but I loved, absolutely loved a Game Boy Advance game with them in it. But sadly, I never owned it. It was my cousin who owned it, but I'm definitely happy to have gotten these for myself for my birthday because, yeah, <laughs> the search is over. Now we have a sponsored unboxing. So this is a company, like sometimes I'll get people to reach out to me and they're trying to advertise their new products, but the product that they wanted to advertise isn't quite ready yet. They're kind of still in the final development stages. So they asked if I would be interested in checking this thing out. And we're actually going to give one of these things away to one lucky viewer. You can find all the rules in the description. Very similar to how I do all my other giveaways. It's just comment based. But you also have the opportunity to sign up for their mailing list. Just in case the commenter doesn't claim their prize, which is 85% of the time. But I'm actually pretty excited for this thing. It is by Groove Gear and it's called the Capsule. This is intended for people who do a lot of traveling with their guitar and they don't want to carry like a uh, big luggage bag as well as a guitar case. This kind of like combines that. 
So I'm definitely interested to check this out. I don't do a lot of traveling, but I always hear stories of like uh, Jared James Nichols on his Instagram page of how he's traveling all over the place. Maybe he needs to get himself one of these or something. Well, if we can find the zippers, here we go. Oh, that's cool. So it's like a, uh, a TSA latch there with a key that actually locks your zippers in place so you always know where they're gonna be. I believe that this part is where your guitar goes. So let's get a guitar and put it in here. Cool. And it looks like we've got this that can help like secure the fit. Um, let's see what's in here. Oh, it looks like we got little wheels that you can put it on. Yeah, it looks like there's just a sliding rail down here. There we go, that's pretty easy. It's nice to know that you can remove the wheels if you want to. And there's kind of a, uh, a storage pouch there in a way. There we go, the fit of that's actually pretty darn good. This is kind of a strange shaped guitar too, so that's nice. So you're supposed to put your guitar in here, but then if I can figure this out, there it is, okay. I knew there was a second layer here somewhere. This is where you're meant to be able to store all your clothing. So if you're just like a guy who goes busking all day long, you can take this thing with you. You got a nice protective case for your guitar. And hey, if you need a change of clothing or you need to put a sandwich in here, it's just kind of a an all-in-one thing. And something else that they've done is they partnered with this Bovita company, which, which provides you guys with like a, a two-way humidity control thing. So if you've got an acoustic guitar, because they make acoustic guitars, electric guitars, and bass guitar versions of this. I like that, that handle. It's got like a, uh, a rubber grip on the inside. And when you flip it over to the back side, that is nice and padded. I like the way that feels. Because sometimes when you carry a regular case, it can be kind of uncomfortable. So yeah, that's kind of a cool product here. They also have a built-in tracking feature here. I think that's something that you have to renew every year, but it's like $4 or something really cheap. I could definitely see using this thing in the future. Like maybe it's time to go spelunking with my guitar. <laughs> Continuing on here with my birthday celebration. Basically the running theme for this episode is guitars that I've always wanted. Because these next two, if you thought Powerpuff Girls was great, you're gonna love these. They're more so akin to what you're used to seeing on this channel. So these are two Gibson models that I've been uh, kind of looking for for a while. One of them is just a super rare guitar that it just takes forever to even find one of them. And this other one is something that's more along the lines of it's hard to find one at a decent price. So it looks like I got a, a bunch of CDs here. So it looks like I get the Runaways, Joan Jett, Bad Reputation, that's probably a good one. So pretty much everything Joan Jett has been included with this guitar. That was just kind of nice case candy for the seller to throw in. I don't think that came with the guitar. But what is this? Hmm. So it appears you're supposed to use this for some sort of laminate flooring. Okay, so it's padding for your flooring. Interesting stuff. This guy must work for a flooring company and just had a bunch of that laying around. But anyways, this guitar. I did the signature Joan Jet. I think it was, what, it was a 339 last year. I wasn't really impressed with how many views that video got. It was just a an okay guitar because Joan Jett, not really known for the 339 in her heyday. She is known for this, the 65 Melody Maker. 65 Melody Makers, like the originals, are fantastic. Fantastic guitars. Definitely try one out. I had a great time with the uh, Michael Clifford Signature Melody Maker. So when this one came up at finally a price that I could afford to do what I do with these things, it's like definitely we're gonna pick this thing up. It was described as mint condition and believe it or not this is just kind of how they came from the factory. They have that road worn vibe to them. It almost feels like there's still a finish over top of those worn areas though. This does not necessarily feel like the 65 Melody Makers I've had. This has that full nut width, so I can't wait to review this one. It's gonna be a simple guitar, but just a cool guitar at the same time. So I can finally say, yes, I have had the Joan Jett Signature Melody Maker. I want to find the Black Hearts version as well because those kind of have some cool inlays. This is more just the, uh, the straight up and down Joan Jett Signature. Mmm. And now, the one that you will be happy you stayed for. 
I don't know about you guys, but I am feeling like a dramatic unboxing. I think I grabbed the wrong guitar. <laughs> At least I, I hope I did. Um, no, it's the right one. I just thought it had the original case. I guess I remember incorrectly. That's okay, this is a nice Roadrunner. The very last guitar hunting episode we did, there was a guitar that I told you, I'm not gonna tell you how much I offer them just in case. Just in case I got it, I got it. <laughs> What's inside? Oh. Rocket Red Sparkle Top Deluxe. Okay. I get it now. I get it a little bit more. I was always a fan of the blue sparkle tops because I had never actually seen the Rocket Red Sparkle in person. I think I understand this a little bit better now. So it almost has like an orange-ish vibe to it. It really catches the light in an interesting way, and it just like really pops at you. And this has that stereotypical vintage smell to it. And the reason why I decided to go with this one is because uh, it said no brakes, cracks, or repairs. Now looking at it in person, it definitely has a whole lot more finish checking than was advertised. But that's okay as long as there's not a headstock repair anywhere. So it looks like we've got the nut has been replaced. Oh, and that's the other bad thing about this guy is he got a chip off the side of the headstock, but I'll take that over top of a, uh, a full on headstock repair. So for me, it was just the opportunity to finally get to check out a Rocket Red Sparkle Top Deluxe. I've already done a blue sparkle top and those are the main two colors. There are a few other ones that are stupidly rare, but hopefully we'll find one of those one day too. But yeah, this is another one I can cross off my bucket list. The Rocket Red Sparkle. It's so under black light here. Yeah, I thought that might be the case. It looks like we have a few very small touch-ups on the front. Those areas did look a little bit darker in person. I just thought they might have been dings, but that looks like a small touch-up. The face of the headstock looks good. The tuners are definitely good. There's no headstock repair, but we do see a little bit of uh, abnormal glowing right here but it's only in that small area so it's like our uh, truss rods in good shape though so that's all that really matters i'm gonna go ahead and say i bet this is one of the uh earlier made ones because it seems to have a lot of early gibson features to it and i'm sure i have an original case for it somewhere all right let's go ahead and move on to some boxing our first guitar to pack up here is one of the uh, new guitar day purchases that somebody did through me the Fender Broadcaster USA reissue. Reissue, it's more of a tribute. They didn't get absolutely everything right. It was fun reading through the comments, seeing all the things that I might've missed on this guy, but I had a great time with this one. I mean, some people might just think it's a regular Telecaster style reissue guitar that just says Broadcaster on it. And I will agree, it's kind of a letdown that they didn't ship these things from the factory with the blend circuit. But again, I'm still gonna stand by. Most people probably would prefer it this way anyways. But I guess you can get some really unique tones out of that. And who knows, maybe I'll get the uh, custom shop version of this one through somebody else. But for now, let's go ahead and get this one shipped off to its new owner. Apparently the Dylan Talks Tone YouTube guy is gonna visit him and uh, modify the wiring. So who knows, if you watch that channel, you might see that happen. But the tones out of this thing, I loved them. They're very thin and spanky, the way a telly should be. Our next item to pack up here, you might not even be able to see it, it's so small. 
There's a little bit of a story behind this. So this is an original Les Paul Artist Truss Rod cover. And I think I've had this thing for like a good four years. And the story behind it is I had a Les Paul Artist that was like player's grade, had a bunch of things replaced on it. I was already losing money because those things are nearly impossible to sell because nobody wants the Moog Electronics. But the husk of those guitars are kind of cool. I'll have to re-review one of those in the future because they actually have one of the earliest cutaways on the back for a Les Les Paul. Next to the Les Paul recording anyways. But there was a phase when I wanted to be a headhunter because it didn't make sense for me to own a Les Paul Artist, the 2550, an Artisan, all the special ones that had a cool truss rod cover to them. So I thought I would start collecting those. But I threw this one up for sale on Reverb I think about two years ago. It's an item that, you know, not everybody is going to need a Les Paul Artist truss rod cover, but there's somebody out there that does need one. And that somebody lives very, very far away. So let's send this little piece of brass on its journey. Our next one to say goodbye to did not take long to sell at all. This is the Epiphone 50 Standard. Once I actually got time to set this thing up a little bit better, again, I'm not a professional when it comes to that stuff, but adding a little bit of relief to the neck did help, but you still have some fret clearance issues, but the guitar is playable as is. So this one, definitely not the worst Defender of the new Epiphones, but it's a nice little Les Paul standard if you can't afford the true Gibson version or you just don't want to afford it because, you know, outside of doing guitar reviews and demos, I probably want to be the type of guy that spends you know, two and a half thousand dollars on a brand new guitar either. But I like the collectability factor of the older instruments. And hey, I have a YouTube channel about high-end guitars, so it makes sense for me to buy them. Thank you Troglodytes for tuning in to my birthday unboxing episode, and I'm beyond proud to say that it's 2020 on Leap Day that this channel hit 100,000 subscribers. Thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to check out Groove Gear's website to enter that giveaway, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.